Hello everyone, this is Natash, and I'd like to talk a bit in more of a serious note. Now I spoke earlier tonight about Grand Theft Auto V being banned in Australia, and I feel there is more that needs to be spoken on this subject. I got a comment on that video that really showed me I needed to have done a bit more to make my point less ambiguously. I won't display the comment here because I don't feel it would really help anything to do so, but it centered on a few points of disagreement. One was a question of how I framed my argument, which I will admit I likely could have done better. I do apologize for that, as I was speaking through a headache at the time. Feeling a bit better now, so hopefully this video does a better job of conveying my reasoning. The second was the assertion that violence in games causes violence in real life. This has been a claim for many years. Before games, music was the culprit, so on and so forth through the many media civilization has used. It may seem like a reasonable argument on the surface to claim that exposure to violence leads to desensitizing towards it, but the facts simply don't bear it out. The fact of the matter is that there is no objective data supporting these claims. I will admit that the burden of evidence here is quite heavy in this case, as those who are making this claim must also sort out any correlation to accurately determine the causation, but the stakes are no less than the sacrificing of this era's most transformative art. We frequently look down at book burning, but really this is hardly different. The simplest fact of the matter is that with stakes so high, there must be some objective proof that the causation is not only defined, but also to some degree inevitable. I can point to myself as an example of someone who has not been made violent due to video games, but I have not seen much evidence to support that change in other people. Therefore, I may conclude that any relationship that exists is one of correlation rather than causation. That is to say, violent people are more likely to play violent games than a violent game is to make someone violent. The other argument is that a message is silent and it becomes dangerous. Now, this is a fair point on the surface, but the question that remains is the question of who gets to make that determination. A quote, dangerous message has been the catch-all argument in any movement dedicated to silencing media, but it really is quite impossible to judge. Every side of any debate will likely believe to a certain extent that the opposing belief is quote, dangerous. And the simple fact about that is that it can only be judged by its outcomes go back to the point I made earlier, there is no evidence to support that violent games cause violence in people. I would like to digress to a film relevant to this line of thinking. The film is called Equilibrium. It's an action film starring Kristen Bale. Specifically, I would like to talk about the premise. The futuristic, dystopian society of the film began with the argument that strong emotions cause crimes and violence. Fair enough, they do. Therefore, they decided that the safest thing for the public interest is the absolute inhibition of human emotion through mandatory drugs, and the destruction of any media that can stir up any emotions. There's a rather striking scene in the beginning of the movie that features countless works of art being destroyed, all in the name of public safety. I bring this up because this dystopian line of thinking falls within the same fallacy as the thinking that blames media for violence. To blame media and art for people's actions is entirely misguided. It is, to be quite honest, rather childish 
to blame human shortcomings on a form of media rather than on the person themselves. When the inexcusable actions of some are accepted, the blame may shift to the society that condones those actions. That is a fair transition. However, at this juncture, it has to be realized and accepted that art is a reflection of society, not the cause of it. Forms of art do not exist in a vacuum. Violent video games are so prevalent because the culture has an obsession with violence. The obsession with violence doesn't come from the games. It's an important distinction that is not made in these arguments. Thus, I will end with an exceedingly relevant quote. Games are art. Art can be offensive, and often is. You don't get to pick and choose. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.